So many of you guys know by now we have a craft brewery here on the farm. We do all of our own distribution in Connecticut, which is a lot of accounts, it's a lot of miles. We have one van that does it all. This van takes a lot of beating. The guys that work with us, super strong, carrying kegs all day, um, you know, just brute force. And uh, that brute force translated into El Accidente, where uh, the handle, I'll give you a hint, this one's supposed to be attached still. So now my job as Mr. Fix-It is to see if I can turn this handle back into a functioning part of our van before we have to do deliveries this week. Um, it might be a faster solution than going to a auto body shop, plus probably a cheaper one. And uh, I don't know, we'll see if I can fix it. I'm inside the van. I want to get to the inside of the door, the guts of the door. I have to take off this little plastic panel. It's got these little um, plastic push-in, expanding little pins, we'll call them. Uh, I got to take all those out so that I can peel this off and then be able to see on the inside so I can get to the guts. I really think that I'll just be able to epoxy this handle back together, but I got to take the whole mechanism apart uh, to be able to get to the parts that I need to fix and replace and shore up before I can put it all back together. So let's get inside this panel. The top of the panel had those simple plastic push pin things, so I used a screwdriver and just popped them out. The bottom has torque screws, so I'm using a T27 torque screw wrench. Happen to have this uh, torx kit multiple size thing. Save my butt here, and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna unscrew some screws. It's super exciting. Now I know that if I unscrew this mechanism from the outside and it drops on the inside, I can actually access it. So I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew this. This is the broken part of the mechanism. I can't access it directly because there's a piece of metal in the way. Hopefully if I unscrew it, I'll be able to drop it down, get to the part that I need, repair it, and we'll see what goes from there. The lock, or the handle mechanism that wants to come out is, is right here. And you can see that this is metal and I can't get through it because it's metal. Uh, and there's all this stuff underneath. There's all the locking mechanism for the door. There's other handles. There's electronic locks that and sensors that let you know if the door is locked or door is ajar, it triggers the lights. Um, the, really, the trick with this stuff is, is that you don't want to pull anything too hard. You want to ram it out of there because there's little plastic bits and you don't want to break any of those plastic bits because you always then have to buy the whole setup and it's expensive. You just see like where the tension is, where things are happening and see Oh, can this turn this way? Can this move that way? And you slowly kind of work the puzzle backwards so that uh, you get the part out that you need to get out and fix, and then you can put it back together hopefully later. Uh, so I'm going to tease this thing apart and stop talking on camera and uh, get this mechanism out past all of this stuff. <laughs> so I found out what was wrong. <clears throat> this handle, I got, I got everything out. And uh, this little bit fell out when I released it or, you know, got the stuff out. And uh, this is supposed to go together like this. And I have to figure out now how I'm going to attach this to this and put it back into here in a way that makes sense with all these pieces. I have no idea how I'm going to do this. You guys, I figured this out. It was really cool. So this thing that's broken goes in here on the edge. Bam. So it makes this, that's, that's my pivot point, right? And the brokey bit, this, goes on the inside and grabs this little piece of metal. And I don't know if you can see this, it kind of locks itself up. Yeah, there you go. When I move this bit, see it moving in the door? That's so much fun. I need to reconnect this in a way that is fairly accurate uh, and sturdy going forward so that um, if the guys break it again, I can break their knuckles uh, or faces, but what I think I'm gonna do is epoxy it, but not just epoxy it, I'm gonna carve out a groove right here and put a, a nail in there uh, so that it's reinforced with some metal so that hopefully that this does not happen again. Now we're in the shop. 
and I have the bits and I want to put them together. They have a jagged edge which fits together where it broke and then it creates like that perfect orientation of what it should look like. And uh, I want to save that but I want it to be stronger. So to save it, I'm going to super glue it and put it together so that I have a working model to kind of reinforce. Once that super glue is set, uh, I'm going to dig out a little trench in there and epoxy a metal piece of metal, metal shiv some kind, piece of nail, I don't know. Um, but first step, super glue. Second step, reinforce. Uh, because if I try to do this with epoxy, it would just keep falling off because the epoxy takes a little while to set, where the super glue kind of is a little bit more instant. I can hold it and and it'll all work. So, starting with that. So now that the super glue is set, I'm gonna use my Dremel, this little uh, fine-tuned thing here, with a little cutty bit that uh, just kinda like lets you freeform sculpt things, and I'm gonna cut out a little trench I think the winner of what should I put in there to make it solid is a little piece of braided wire, little aircraft cable, mm-hmm. Why would I use this? It's metal, it's very durable, and uh, with all the little grooves and stuff, if I pour this whole thing full of epoxy, it's going to sit and nestle into the piece of plastic, and all that epoxy is gonna go into that metal and uh, just fuse together and become one. And I can just sand the edge down real quick, make sure everything fits real nice, and this'll make it a really solid handle. This is taking like an hour of my time uh, versus paying however much we would pay for a mechanic, plus all the time for shipping parts. This is great. So we'll see if I end up going with this, but now this. So now that I got a little notch cut out, the aircraft cable that I chose is gonna fit in there perfectly. And then you fill the rest in with epoxy and it creates a solid metal bar that the guys, the big burly men, they can grab against and they can pull it and, and it will not break, hopefully. Day two, my epoxy is set in the handle. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Oh, focus, and there it is. There is a piece of aircraft cable in this door handle covered in epoxy. What I'm gonna do now is clean up some of the epoxy and just roughness to make sure everything runs smoothly. Then I'm gonna put the whole door back together and uh, hopefully everything works and we're good to go. Bye. While I'm doing that, let me tell you about today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is you. That's right, you guys are sponsoring this episode and every episode of Farm Marketing Solutions on YouTube, my website, everything that I do here uh, all comes down to you. If you wanna build your own chicken tractor, I sell the plans for that on my store. If you wanna buy this t-shirt, I sell this t-shirt on my store. If you wanna just come in and see some of my Amazon affiliate links and be like, oh, I wanna buy something off Amazon, click through the Amazon affiliate links on my website, all those things are ways to support me, keep things going. I don't really believe in donate buttons. I took all my donate buttons down. I don't really like that people put up donate buttons. You should offer something. You should get something in return when you spend your money, when you whip your wallet out. You should get a shirt. You should get a chicken tractor. I have non-chicken specific stuff up on the store. Uh, or you could buy something for a friend, buy something for a relative. We got the holidays coming up soon. So check it out and I uh, hope to see you guys around. And now back to whatever it is that I'm doing. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. <laughs> Bam. 
It works. It works. My favorite part about all this is that when you pull the handle out, you can now see that little piece of cable and the epoxy in there, but now it's hidden. Now you see it, now it's hidden. Now you see it, now it's hidden. And no one will ever appreciate the little craftiness. It took me maybe two, three hours to put all this together. But if we had to wait on a mechanic to order parts, uh, send a van out, it would just delay the deliveries because they wouldn't be able to use one of the doors, so then they'd have to manually lift the kegs over the other kegs. It would have been terrible. And now, boom, 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 boom. Everything is good. That's it. The handle is fixed. The van is functional. We have delivery starting tomorrow. I did it just in time. We'll be able to get the beer out and everything is good. If you like this video, hit the little thumbs up like thing at the bottom of this video on YouTube. If you want to see some more of it, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to come and taste our beer, we're at 33 Camps Road in Kent, Connecticut. Just check out Kent Falls Brewing Company. We have some awesome beer. We have a delivery van that now works. And uh, until next time, I will see you guys out in the field.